I'm Sister John Dominic, a Dominican Sister of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. And I'm Dr. Karen Villa, clinical neuropsychologist. And we're here at our Mother House Chapel in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we'd like to share with you a concept from Raised in Grace, Made in Wholeness. It comes from neuroscience, really a biological fact, that we know, which is called co-regulation. And I'd like for Dr. Villa to kind of unpack that for us so that we can truly understand what this, what this means. Yeah, so neuroplasticity is how the body and brain get wired through our experiences over time. And you know, we mostly talk about the brain getting wired, but the nervous system can also get wired through this um, process of co-regulation. And children are always looking to the adults in their life to regulate their own nervous systems. And this is how they come to self-regulate eventually is through co-regulation. So co-regulation is when an adult in a safe and connected state um, helps to bring a child into that same safe and connected state. So when we're teaching or if we're parenting or coaching, right. um, they're constantly mm -hmm. looking and they're trying. And this also the same mm -hmm. understanding can even come between us as adults. Right. But here our focus is really looking at the interaction with children. Are there certain, we talked about it being a biological fact from the neuroscience, but are there ingredients or part of this that kind of make up this whole understanding? Yeah, so scientists have broken down co-regulation into three components, and those are neuroception, resonance, and mirroring. Mm. And so neuroception is the way that our bodies are picking up these cues of safety, danger, relatedness. And we do it within our bodies. We do it by picking up cues from our environment and in our interactions with other people. And so this is the idea of what you see when a baby will coo when they're with their parent, for instance, but they'll cry when they're with a stranger. So even at that very young age, they're picking up cues in their nervous systems about their environment and the nervous system state of other people. And then the second principle and the second ingredient is resonance. And this is like vibrational energy, like we can pick up the energy and emotional state of another person. And one example from physics that really illustrates this that I think is important is when you put two string instruments like harps in a room and you pluck the string on one harp, it will resonate and literally vibrate the string on the other harp. The exact same one. The exact same That's string. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> and our nervous systems are like this yeah. when we're with people. So say you're married to somebody for a long period of time or you have a good friend. You, um, you learn over time to really yeah. tune in to um, the energy and emotion yeah. of that person yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. And it is kind of a shortcut in our learning and our being together. So we're not imagining it when we were in a space where we can kind of pick up the tension or the, the vibes from other people. Right, it's, or the joy. The joy, you know, exactly. These right. things are <laughs> contagious. Yes. And when we say children are absorbing so much from the world around them, this is the mechanism by which yeah. that's happening. And then the last ingredient is called mirroring. So this comes from mirror neurons, if anybody's heard of those. And they are neurons in our central nervous system that help us imitate another person. Um, and it's one of the ways that we learn again. It's one of the ways that we practice empathy is through this process called mirroring. It's a really important discovery, I would say, in the last 20 years in neuroscience. So is there, what's an example of that that you could kind of maybe help, her, help them understand that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I saw a really interesting, yeah. adorable one on the internet a few days ago. It was um, about a one-year-old little boy sitting on the floor and he was really distressed and crying. And you hear his mother in the background say to him, if you're happy and you know it, clap your yeah. hands. And you could just see him let go of his distress and he started imitating her clapping, but he oh. was also imitating the joy in her voice yeah, that's and in her incredible. person. So that's what I love about what you, these examples is that you can, like the importance of bringing the joy and the, the delight uh, that actually they're going to see that and imitate yes, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's going to get wired into their nervous system. Yeah. So uh, this whole understanding with the co-regulation is shows this, this relationship, you know, that we are relational and that our brain is this so social organ, you know, right. and, it, and it's always constantly, you know, in the nervous system, constantly looking for the relationship, this connection. 
And the reason why we picked this location here in our mother, beautiful Mother House Chapel. Oh, I'm so honored to yeah. be here. It's beautiful. <laughs> is that this understanding of co-regulation, we can think of this in our own prayer time, our own time when we have Eucharistic adoration with Jesus, this, that this experience, this biological experience of co-regulation happens with us. So when I come in here, the sisters, we come in, in here early in the morning for our time of meditation mm -hmm. and adoration. There's this whole sense of silence and calmness that just kind of descends among everyone because we're in the presence of Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Mm -hmm. And so from him, you know, this same biological interaction can truly take place in ourselves and it really brings to life that um, gospel where he says you know come to me all you who are labor and are heavy burdened yes. or even in our own times mm -hmm. all of us who are experiencing you know stress or trauma or just just the pressures of our daily life that coming and resting in him mm -hmm. um, that yes we do feel this but it is because something truly biological is happening. And you're so right that when you spend time as a community finding that still point of grace, co-regulating with him, and then you carry that out into the world, yeah. that's an incredible gift. Yeah. And this is what we do as parents, what we do as teachers, and what we're encouraging people to do is to find that still point of grace through co-regulating with Christ so that they can carry that into their work with children in the beauty of this gradualness growing them up so they can be calm and connected and whole. So may God bless you and, and continue um, looking for more episodes like this or different teachings that we will continue to offer to you um, as we unpack Raised in Grace, Made in Wholeness. Mm -hmm.